praise be Jesus Christ. And forever. Just before Mass, Father Dave and I had a little conversation talking about last year at Corpus Christi, and I believe it was at the invitation of Father Dave, we celebrated Mass here at the Finnegan Field House. The configuration looked a little different. We were still in the midst of the, as we'd say, the social distancing. And then we had, we celebrated a Corpus Christi Eucharistic procession around the campus, reminding us that at Franciscan University, the Eucharist is central. Uh, as the way I see it, if the Eucharist is not central at a Catholic institution, it's not a Catholic institution. Well, but we still have had a few months since then, and I think we've lived our own liturgical twilight zone these past, like what's coming up next week, just like it seemed like at times the, uh, the goalposts were being moved on us when it came to the science. It's a reminder that God has blessed us with the, certainly the knowledge of science, with reason, but it's not infallible. But we do the best we can with what we have, and for that I'm very grateful. Seven questions. Is the church moving in the direction not consistent with the council? Was the council a big mistake? Has the church lost its sense of tradition? Does unity demand conformity? Is pluralism hurting the church? Do mixed loyalties divide the church? And who exercises legitimate authority in the church? You may be thinking right now, uh, Bishop, that's a very interesting way to begin a homily on the Eucharist. No, I'm not the cure of ours. I'm not reading your minds and hearts. However, if we delve deep enough into the Gospels, the Pauline letters, letter to the Hebrews, the Acts of the Apostles, we recognize that these seven questions were on the minds of people in the early church following the council of Jerusalem in the year 48. You see, these questions can at times surface and resurface in the church. But what remains? The truth remains. The one thing. The most important thing in our lives is Jesus Christ himself. The letter to the Hebrews, dear friends, instructs us that Jesus Christ's sacrifice is once and for all. Once and for all. The one thing. the Holy Eucharist, Corpus Christi. In the Old Testament, the word covenant is employed more than 300 times. What does that mean, Bishop? Thanks for asking. The covenant is of primary importance between God and his people. We hear it today. And Jesus fulfills that covenant in his paschal mystery. In the gospel today, we attend the Last Supper. Can we not picture Jesus having this Passover dinner in the upper room with his friends, his disciples, his apostles? Little did these apostles know what was going to develop, occur in the ensuing hours and days. Corpus Christi. They were entering into Jesus' paschal mystery. And Jesus made the Last Supper timeless, for his body and blood 
has remained with us from the very beginning. Does not the Holy Eucharist make us church, the body of Christ, the one thing, Corpus Christi? Dear friends, it was probably a little more than a couple of years ago, a chaplain, I'll do a shout out, Father Gossett, chaplain over at Father Michael, because I have two brothers who are priests in the diocese, thank goodness. Well, he introduced Eucharistic adoration to the students once a month, asked them if some of them would be able to attend Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. And it did gain some traction. Well, the students approached him that fall at the beginning of the new school year and asked for a change in its frequency. They asked for it to be every two weeks. And in fact, that they had to move it out of the chapel, which sat about 30 people, well, by COVID standards, four, but <laughs> they had to go upstairs into one of the rooms, and they did a beautiful job setting up the Eucharistic adoration there. And I had the opportunity to visit. And who did I see, or what did I see? I saw a quarter of the population or enrollment at Catholic Central there, 7 o'clock in the evening on Wednesday. I'm not looking for a show of hands, but how many of us thought about attending Eucharistic Adoration at 7 o'clock in the evening when we were in high school? And that's terrific. Another interesting part, when they were walking out, of course, they were taking everything down and turned into a classroom again. Well, for an hour, Father Gossett and I heard confessions as well during the whole holy hour. And then, as they were walking out, I thanked everybody, how the bishop was very, very proud of them. And I said, so everybody here is from Catholic Central. And one of the gentlemen sheepishly said, no. And he went he's going to one of the public schools. I said, oh, so why are you here? And he looks and he goes, because of her. <laughs> Is that not how it works, how we evangelize? To reach out, to show the one thing, Jesus' body and blood, Corpus Christi. Dear friends, at this very moment, at this very altar, we witness and share in Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection. We have become members of the body of Christ because Jesus has made it so. Corpus Christi, the one thing. Who matters most? Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen.